Okay, I think we have some people with microphones. So if anyone would like to ask a question, I think we can amplify that so that um, hopefully everyone will be able to hear. You said you start um, a lot of pieces with the same note, and he yeah. said, which note is it? It's E above middle C. <laughs> you mentioned that a lot of your pieces have effectively the same end, yeah. and he, he, he wants you to talk a little bit about that, and um, what is the ending? Well, my, my endings, um, because there's no sense of real cadence um, in, in the notes that I choose, I could fake cadence, and I did, I, I did a fake cadence in, um, in the Carmen piece, um, um, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just have left it as a, like a, 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 a sore, a raw, uh, you know, sore leg. Uh, a know, bleeding chunk. A bleeding chunk, is that what it's called, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so I, that's sort of a device of, of something which, um, the thing disintegrates, and 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 and, and it, for instance, in my piano concerto, I did it with a vengeance, in that um, it's very busy at the beginning and to two thirds through, um, when I reached a, p a moment of epiphany um, uh, in it, and then it, it, it's as if. The, the fragments, what have just been laid out, in, in, uh, uh, are then more isolated and uh, thing. Um, so, as, as things, it's, uh, the nice thing about long notes, when you bring long notes to the end, um, when you hold any note long enough, it becomes a, it becomes a perfect, it becomes a perfect cadence. It makes its own justification. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a device, I can't think of a better one. And, uh, and um, it's unnecessary, you know, it's, it's good enough. How free were you, um, the question is, when you were working on old material like the Oresteia or Gawain by the vision of your collaborator, the person who was working on the text, interpreting the text, updating the text, whatever? Um, when I've worked with people with a, where a text is concerned and it comes, it's this simply a repetition of what I've been saying, I, I, and, and I'm going through it now at the moment, um, and because I, I feel I did make mistakes in just accepting a text. Um, 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 and not to good results, but as soon I mean, the thing of freedom in what we do, the more you, I, I don't, I'm not free, I don't feel that it's free. I, I'm free, um, um, I know too much. You know, I, I'm, you know there, there's a sort of mannered thing that I'm, I, I couldn't suddenly start writing somebody else's music. I'm, uh, uh, I, have to be, I have to settle for what I've got. In a, in a sense, and that, in that, in a sense, I hope redefines itself, and that I think that um, that there's a there's a sense of evolution in you do that you don't consciously uh, that you don't consciously you uh, uh, you know you have no control over, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but in the case of, of things of music um, uh, which you are influenced by, I mean there are. People are always talking on, uh, in the media, whatever it's called, um, about, I was inspired by this. I mean, what they mean is they fill the idea and, and, you know, there's no, there's no inspiration at all. They took the idea. And you're allowed to do that um, uh, if, you, if you're honest about it, or if you're honest with yourself. But there are influences also that come under the door which you have no control over, and I, but once I can identify them sometimes, I think, oh yes, that's where that comes from. And, 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 um, and, and either you, you have no control over originality, you can't sit down and be original, and, um, and you can't do better either. <laughs> yeah? At school they always told me I could do better. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> we had we had one question down there. 
So I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but the question is about um, if you're a young composer and you want to write a certain kind of music, you have, there's something that you, you feel you need to do, and then there are all kinds of demands to write a piece for children's choir or write a piece which is a piece of functional music for this or that um, occasion or, or situation. Um, how, how do you, how, have you ever had to deal with that kind of situation? And, and um, is yeah. there a disparity between your music and music that you have to write for an occasion or a situation like that? Well, anything I've ever done for an occasion, I don't feel I've done it very well. I mean, if, I, if that's it, I, I, you know, made attempts to write stuff for, for children and things like that. And uh, I, I just simply haven't got it. I, I, I don't know how to make a deal in that sort of I can't no, it's it's all a question where how you believe in the idea when you're doing it and uh, and I don't think I when that's happened to me a few times but I don't really feel I've done it terribly well it's interesting though in that respect to think about the Oresteia because you deliberately you deliberately ask for people who didn't read music is that is that right well yes be, uh, yeah because I didn't want any specialists within the group. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to start from the same level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so well, there, were no, there were no specialists. Mm -hmm. and, um, something I'd like to have done much earlier in my life. I think I sort of did it a bit too late in mm -hmm. a way. Well, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Tell me if I got it right. Is there any process um, in terms of structure that um, do, you, do you plan the structure all in one go or do you is that, is that roughly what you That's want to That's right, yes. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you go along composing it, or do you make a plan? Well, I, 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 I only talked about one piece, where I, I actually um, very rigorously worked it out, and, and, then, and then took get somebody the pair of scissors in order to, to keep my distance my distance from it and it's not something there's not some, something of making pre-compositional structures is not something I've found very fruitful nor do I want to I, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I'm not a mu I'm not an architect musical architect but I like to think you see that that I turn out that there's the logic there's an inner logic of something I'd like to think that it's there I don't know whether it's there or not so how do you feel about musicological analysis of your own work? Does it influence how you see pieces that you wrote in the past, or does it make you think differently about poss possible future projects? Oh, I don't want to seem sound facetious. I never read them. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Next question. It says, in Julian Bream's autobiography, he says that he commissioned you to write a piece in 1982. Yeah. Um, is that the same piece that's now come out just recently? How or? would I know? <laughs> 1992. The reason why he didn't um, uh, uh, didn't come to fulfilment, he, he said, how much do you want? And I said, how much do you get for a recital? And uh, I said, I'll do it for uh, what you get for three recitals. It, it was a lot, bit of arrogance on my side, and he didn't talk to me for, um, for about 15 years after that. <laughs> Apparently, he says in his autobiography that it should take three months and he should get £1,500. Well, okay. I, don't, I don't remember. I was asking him, when, for, I don't know how much he got in those days. Mm -hmm. But I thought that the idea that you know, he could earn that on a risk for a thing, and I, I equated it with three things like that. And then we used to come across every, uh, uh, occasionally in the intervening years uh, in Waitrose. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to hide behind the, the thing to mm -hmm. avoid me, I could see him. <laughs> but it's, it's quite touching what you say about him in, in this book with Fiona Maddox that you've written this piece and it's, he's, he's not playing it, but... No, he can't. Mm. He's incapable. He's, you know, mm. yeah. He's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he's studying Sibelius, and Sibelius said um, that he was a slave to his own material. Um, do you feel like that, or is, is there any, any freedom? Well, if I protect it, if, if, if I detect it, yeah. Um, it was Auden who said, um, 
you spend um, uh, 30 years of your life copying other people and then for the last 30 years copying yourself um, but, but, I, but I write music not to repeat myself and, um, and I, but, but then I get, come down to the thing where I said you can't control originality or moving things on that I, I, I sort of feel that, that that it sort of happened somehow um, and it, it's not self-conscious. Does that answer his question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Harry, thank you very much. My pleasure.